How? By rejecting Jesus and committing the unpardonable sin of the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, rejecting Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, the only one who paid for my sins, the only one who can get me to heaven from Oahu. Well, so why is there a hell? Because the soul lives forever. You cannot terminate, annihilate the soul. We're all going to spend eternity somewhere. It will either be in heaven or it will be in hell. What about our Catholic friends who think there's somewhere in between? I don't find it in my Bible anywhere. There's no such place. There's no purgatory. No. What's that place called? Purgatory, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't raised Catholic. <laughs> Purgatory or limbo or whatever you want to call that place in between. No, 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 no. There's no such thing, no such place. So Jesus says, if you will believe in me, if you will call on me, you will be saved for all eternity. Well, how does that work? What about good people, just genuinely kind, nice, honest people? You mean to tell me that they're going to spend eternity in hell if they reject Jesus Christ? I mean, they lived a good life. They did good deeds. I'm not going to tell you that. The Bible tells you that. Again, the Bible is very explicit. So, Again, I thought God loved me. He wasn't mad at me. Why would God, who's not mad, create a hell and allow people to go there? I submit to you that if anybody goes to hell, it is over Jesus' dead body, literally. See, Jesus said, I died on the cross for you so that you would not perish. So if you go to hell by rejecting me, it's over my dead and resurrected body. There's a passage of Scripture in the book of Revelation. It's found in 12.12. Easy to remember. Revelation 12, 12. I was going to mention this last week, but I think it's apropos for today. John is on the island of Patmos. The year is about 95 AD. He's, the island of Patmos is about 50 miles off the uh, coast of what we call modern-day Turkey, there in the Aegean Sea. And this is where he receives the revelation, the last book in the Bible. You know the book that nobody ever wants to talk about because it's so apocalyptic? (laughs) Oh, you guys are studying the book. I never forget the first time I taught the book of Revelation on the mainland. And uh, some of the people that were coming to my Bible study said that some friends of theirs were just baffled that they were going to a Bible study in the book of Revelation. And what's more is they were getting blessed. Did you know that of the 66 books of the Bible, only one Bible, one book in the Bible promises a blessing to those who read it, hear it, and take it to heart, and it's the book of Revelation? Do you know what the word revelation in Uh, the original language of the New Testament is, it's apocalypsos in Greek, where we get our English word apocalyptic. Do you know what the word means? It means different things to us. It means cataclysmic, horrific. Well, yes, but in the original language of the New Testament, it means revealing, unveiling, revealing, revelation. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But it sounds to me like the book of Revelation reveals what's going to happen, yet future. 
there's this interesting verse in chapter 12, verse 12. It is written, therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe, kind of like woe, to the earth and the sea. Why? Because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury or wrath. He's the one that's mad. He's very angry. Oh, by the way, I know you heard me say God loves you. But I also have to say Satan hates you. Yeah, he hates your guts. Have a nice afternoon. He hates your family. He hates your kids. He really hates your marriage because it's a prototype of your relationship with Jesus Christ as the bridegroom, you as the church, as the bride. He hates your marriage. He hates the Christian marriage because of what it represents. So he's filled with fury, but here's what I want to draw your attention to. He knows that his time is short. Now, contrary to popular opinion, Satan is not omniscient or all-knowing. Also, Satan is not omnipresent or all places at the same time like God. He's not God's opposite. You know, we talk, we talk about, oh, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. He's not, he doesn't even bother with you. He goes after Billy Graham, you know, Greg Glory. Uh, those guys, he doesn't mess with you. Who are you? He doesn't, he sends his little trainees, his interns. <laughs> he can't be, be all places at one time. So, but it's interesting, he knows that he has a short time. In other words, he knows the time is at hand. He doesn't have much time. His time is short. He better get busy. Get busy doing what? trying to do what the Bible says he will do? He needs to have an antichrist in place. See, he doesn't know the day or the hour either. No man knows the day or the hour, not even the sun, especially the devil. And by the way, if you're wondering, the devil is real. And one of the most powerful lies that he has ever, as the father of lies, deceived people with is that he is just a make-believe character, cute little red tights, pitchfork on your shoulder. That's not the devil. The devil is a very real being. And he has his minions, his demons, those fallen angels who have already sealed their fate. And he is hell-bent, quite literally, on destroying your life. The Bible says he roars and he roams like a lion stalking, like a lion stalks his prey, seeking whom he may devour. He will do everything he can to keep you out of God's kingdom, keep you out of a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then once you get into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, he'll stop at nothing and do everything to destroy that relationship. So he knows his time is short. And that's why I believe things are heated up and things are revving up, and the time is at hand. I wonder sometimes, Satan knows his time is short. Do we as Christians know that time is short? Now, let me hasten to say that we need to live our lives in such a way that we occupy till he comes. Don't go sell everything, run up your credit cards, and go wait on the co-allows for Jesus to come back. <laughs> we need to be as ready for his return, if it were today, as we would be if it were not for another 10 years from now. Are you ready? Are you ready? 